Hi, I'm Mary Gannon, editor with Fluid Power World, and I'm here today with Steve Huzak from Valvolo America. Steve is here today to talk to us a little bit about its Automato configurable software package. Steve, just tell us a little bit about what this is, and then we'll kind of delve into um, how it works and why people are using this. Well, as you said, it's a configurable software package for single and dual solenoid driver functions. It allows the user to parameterize and configure their solenoid drivers via Wi-Fi. The app you see on the screen is the operator interface. As you said, Automato is the brand. And you can see just a few icons here to help the operator navigate through both the configuration of and viewing outputs and inputs of the control device. It looks pretty simple. It's got a pretty, you know, like you said, four icons. So what do all these icons mean and how, and how does the user use them? Well, we could start with the most simple one. The exclamation point uh, is an indication for errors in the control. You can see today, now it's not highlighted, but just touching the icon, you can see the status of your control system. And we see here, no errors. If there were errors, of course, that icon would be red, indicating an error status, alerting the operator he might want to check which errors he has active at the time. The camera icon, start maybe toward the end and work our way backwards. But when you select that, the Wi-Fi device collects all the parameters that you've set in your controller for easy viewing or checking or for a reference. The eye icon is where you can view the inputs and outputs and status of your control system. Here you see the command flashing red, indicating the input command has some error that you need to check. Now we have a green command and you can see input percent and the output in milliamps. So the eye icon is actually, once your system is actually configured, that's where you check to see how it's all operating? Yes, or as you're going through the configuration, um, if you want to check the performance of the okay. output or the, the machine as you're optimizing the system, okay. you might come back here and see sure. the inputs and outputs. Perfect. The gear is where you actually make your configuration. The basic controller that this is built for has four outputs, two pairs. So at the top, you see folders with two groups and a quick reference of what all you can do inside of these pages. So we'll select group one. Again, the Wi-Fi device queries a controller and brings your parameters in. And we've tried to design this to be both somewhat predictive and to help guide the user through mm -hmm. uh, his parameterization. There's a lot of options here. And as you select various options, the system will turn off parameters that are no longer relevant. Okay. So uh, for example, you see here joystick calibration. Uh, we have this device set as a CAN bus input, so the calibration is not necessary. So it alerts you to that. We can select the current folder, and we have our current settings for output A and output B. Your I minimum, minimum starting current, the maximum current, IFC is I fine control. So we have a function where the operator may want to have a fine control input to increase his control resolution. And we have a hysteresis function, which allows the begin point uh, and the end of control on a neutral command to be slightly different mm -hmm. to cover the hysteresis of control valves or drive pumps and motors. So we'll select the minimum current. You'll see the input page in the default setting of 200 milliamps. I can input a new value. You see that in the lower box. I can enter that value. You see the upper uh, screen accepts the 350. And again, along the lines of trying to guide the user, and help them through. If at this point I decide to leave this page, you'll see that the set icon is flashing yellow, indicating that you may have entered the value, but you haven't set it to the controller. So we'll set that value, and you see the save icon mm -hmm. is turned to red, right. alerting again the operator. You've set it, you can try that value, but if you want to save it, you better and you can come back and save select later. save, sure. Okay. Same with the other current settings and hysteresis. 
We have a ramp folder. We've included a standard ramp, which everybody is used to in the industry. Uh, we also have created a dynamic ramp. Okay. Uh, that is a special ramp, which allows you to accelerate your current quickly and then kind of integrate into the final set point in functions that the operator is moving with the drive or swing of a boom. However, that feature can make it more comfortable for the operator okay. in the machine. So again, output A, output B. We have an Excel ramp, a D cell ramp. We also include a neutral ramp. You may want the machine to behave differently on a neutral command than just a change in the current command. Okay. And we also added a transition ramp. So if the operator commands the function over center, left to right, up to down, again, you may want that behavior to be different than your standard ramps. Right. We'll go to the CAN folder. And this, I think, is an important feature of the software and the app. Most of the products on the market, in order to include a CAN input, uh, operator needs to be familiar with CAN, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even has to have some training to get through the setup of transmissions and receive uh, on the CAN network. What we've done is incorporated all that uh, kind of behind the scenes and currently standardizing on J1939 okay. uh, protocol, which is most popular in our market. There will be later uh, an app or included in this app, uh, an option for CAN open. But this I believe is powerful because if you have the data sheet of your CAN device, um, in that data sheet will be the priority, the PGN, and the source address. It's very simple then for the operator to select, for example, his priority, and the same as the current screen. Mm -hmm. He looks to his data sheet, he puts the number in that's associated with that device, sets it, saves it, and off he goes. Same with PGN. Because J1939 is structured and well-defined, we're able to, again, guide the user. And for the PGN, you can scroll through and pick a limited number, but all that are available right. in J1939. Again, set, save, and back out. Again, right. same with source address. So you can see that with the device data sheet, in about 30 seconds, mm -hmm. I have established CAN communication for my input. Very simple. Very simple, very intuitive. Thank you. And then on the I.O. page, we can select our input and output types. On the input, we have control type, uh, ERT, which is enable release timer, mm -hmm. and an input curve. So we'll select control type, and you can see we have CAN access with switches. Mm -hmm. Again, in J1939, there's a limited number of switches and locations. Very okay. easy for the operator to select where his enable switch might be or what his fine control switch may be. We have CAN access only, mm -hmm. no switches. USD, which is uni solenoid driver, okay. it's for a single solenoid output with a voltage input. Dual solenoid driver, again, dual solenoid voltage input, or you can turn the group off. In that case, that group is blacked out, you're not using it, no need to look at the parameters. We'll stay with CAN and switches. ERT, enable release timer. That enables, uh, if the enable switch is lost for any reason, it may be the seat switch of a machine, an operator bounces, sure. uh, he may slip off the enable. Typically that commands an e-stop of the machine for safety reasons. But this allows you to set a time that that switch could be open and reclose it and continue your movement. And the curve, you can tune your input curve. The default is a linear curve. Right. However, we may not always want to have perfectly linear mm -hmm. curve. And it's graphical, so you can use the sliders. Well, no entering numbers, you just kind of bump it up and down. Maybe we make something that's more progressive. It gives you a graphical view of mm -hmm. what that will look like on sure. the machine. Uh, and there's 10 segments, so there's plenty of flexibility to be progressive up, progressive down, uh, optimizing 
your control. If you get off in the weeds a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, on all the screens there's default, I can select default, put it back to Makes a linear sense. input and start over again. Great. And for your output, you have your proportional gain, uh, your integral, and dither frequency. That's optimizing the control output to the various solenoids you may be driving. Mm -hmm. um, the dither frequency for the solenoid is usually published by the solenoid manufacturer or valve manufacturer, mm -hmm. what's optimum for that device. But you have the flexibility to go in here and change it, optimize it for your machine. Same with the proportional gain and integral gain. Um, that's not always readily available, what's optimal for the de hydraulic device or control device. And that's an area where we can help you uh, assist by finding that optimum settings for your specific solenoid. Great. So once you're done with all that, it's configured then? Yes, then you're configured, um, ready to test your machine, test the functions. Literally in a few minutes, you can set up a single or dual solenoid driver. So I have a question. You guys, Valvola is a valve manufacturer, correct? correct? What made you want to create this software package for your customers? Well, we see a need in the market for the ability to do simple things in a simple way. Um, there's a lot of electronic controls available. Uh, there's often a type of learning curve to get familiar with it, maybe some training associated with it to start to use the product. Our concept is to have off-the-shelf configurable product with an app um, where someone with very limited or even no electronic programming experience can set up their drivers. So how can our users find this product? Do they go to your website or can they get it on uh, any of the popular the stores? App is available on both Google Play and iTunes. Uh, it's a free download. In order to use the product, you'll have to have the Wi-Fi to CAN converter and one of our controllers, okay. which are readily available. Right, and where can they find out more information about your controllers? At our website, uh, valveamerica.com, and go to the electronics page to see the uh, control hardware available. Thank you so much, Steve. This is very interesting. Thank you, I appreciate it. And uh, as always, visit fluepowerworld.com for more videos, and thank you for watching.